In today's video, how much training volume does it take for beginners to build muscle? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we're going to discuss the specifics of how much training volume you should use to build muscle. And I'm going to come at this from a beginner's perspective. We're going to talk about how to start with training volume and where to go from there once you've figured that out. Now, before we do any of that, we got to define what training volume is. So when it comes to training volume, we're going to basically take our sets times our reps times how much weight we lifted, that's going to give us a number. And that number, let's say we're doing something like a dumbbell curl. Now, a set is a completed round of repetitions, right? So let's say we do a dumbbell curl for 10 reps. But if we do five sets of 10 with 100 pounds, that's 5,000 5, pounds of training volume in that workout for, let's say, the biceps, okay? So how do we look at that and go, what should we be doing as a beginner or as an intermediate to put on some muscle? And how do we look at this in the big picture? The first thing to understand is that beginners respond very well to any stimulus. So the less training volume is probably the better when it comes to starting out. Now, a lot of times what happens is we get in the gym with someone we're friends with. We get invited to work out, but that person has a little bit more training history than us, or we download a training program that someone's using that we admire. Typically, those are gonna be workouts that are gonna leave us very, very sore. And there is a, such a thing as training too much, as being too sore after a workout. You don't actually want to create so much damage that you're unable to move for multiple days at a time, probably keeping you out of the gym and from training any further. So that is why we can start with a low volume. Now, some of the early workout routines that I started out with were three sets of 10, five sets of five, eight sets of eight, and that was wonderful. As a beginner, going in the gym, you can do routines like this, three sets of 10, five sets of five, and almost every time you go back in the gym, you're gonna be able to increase your volume without really changing the sets or the reps. Well, how's that? Well, you're gonna get stronger. So if you're doing three sets of 10 with 100 pounds in week one, and you're doing three sets of 10 with 105 in week two, guess what? You just bumped up your volume. That's progressively overloading. Now, if that continued forever, well, we'd all look like the rock. But eventually that does slow down, and that's where we have to learn about more advanced training techniques. But let's talk about volume. Volume should be based on the body parts you are training. As beginners, we can do single exercises for some of our smaller body parts, like biceps. Whereas we might wanna do multiple exercises for some of our larger, more separated body parts, like our chest and our back. So how do we accomplish this? Well, one way is to take your volume and split it up over multiple exercises. Now, as a beginner, I think it's a good idea to stick with compound exercises so that we learn the skill of these lifts. Just because you're bench pressing doesn't mean you're gonna build a chest. Not if you're flaring your elbows and you're hitting your deltoids for the most part, okay? So understanding how to perform the lifts is a very important part of the skill of lifting weights. If you think of the skill of lifting, much like throwing a baseball, throwing a football, learning how to do that skill, it's very similar in the weight room. You need to learn how to perform the exercises properly so that you're hitting the targeted muscles. If you get ahead of yourself and just start trying to lift heavy and doing too much volume too quickly, you can actually get into a place where you hurt yourself or you get overdeveloped body parts because you've been doing it wrong. How would I know this? I made these classic mistakes. I started off doing so much chest work that I actually just got really big shoulders when I was young. And it took me years to develop a chest because I wasn't training properly. And I actually got quite strong using some lifts that were for chest, but I was prioritizing my shoulders because of the way I was performing them. One way you could set up an exercise program for say the chest would be to do three exercises in the flat plane, like a flat bench, three exercises in the inclined plane, like an inclined dumbbell, and then three exercises in a fly plane using a fly motion, okay? That's gonna be nine exercises for your chest and you can track your sets, reps, and weights so that you're progressing volume appropriately. In my mind, the best way for a beginner to add volume to their program over time is to allow the weights to increase naturally. As the weights increase, the volume increases. You also get better at lifting, the skill gets better because you're progressively overloading. There will come a time when you can no longer progressively overload on the same sets and reps by just increasing the weight, but we'll get to that. 
Another thing to consider is the volume as far as numbers go is not the only thing of importance. It's also important that we have effective reps, meaning we're actually training with a weight that challenges us. We want to be lifting heavy enough so that we're close to failure. A eight or nine RPE or reps in reserve would be one or two. As we get more advanced, we might even use some failure and going beyond failure techniques to increase the volume of our sessions. But for a beginner, if you are lifting heavy enough that you are getting within a rep or two of going to failure in the eight to 10 rep range, well, this is gonna be very challenging. And as you get better, you'll find you can use more weight just as effectively. Another common question I get when it comes to workouts like this is how much rest is appropriate. The DeSalles et al. study that I'll link below basically explains that the amount of rest between sets can have an impact on our efficiency, our strength, and our recovery in the long term. So it's important that we pay attention to our rest. However, short rest periods might not be the best thing. I found the best rest tends to be where you recover enough that you are ready to go at 100% for your next set, but not so long that you actually cool off. I'll typically suggest 60 to 120 seconds between sets. Now, that may lead to fatigue. So later on in the session, if you're finding that you're not able to get in and train again, well, you might just wanna wait a little bit longer because training volume tends to be the most closely associated with building more muscle. So if you can rest a little bit longer and get a little bit more volume, that might be your best bet. Before I get into another topic, the genetics and the differences in training, I wanna bring my man Brett Contreras on here who is a PhD in exercise physiology and let him explain to you some metrics of volume. So the question is, how many sets should I be performing per workout? So if you think a typical set is gonna last around a minute long and then you're gonna rest around two minutes, then that's three minutes per set, give or take, and let's say you work out hard for an hour, that ends up being 20 sets as an upper limit. Now, it is true that a lot of people might work out for an hour and a half, they might only rest a minute, maybe they do 30 sets in a workout. But there's re research indicating that that's not optimal, that you should in fact rest longer because you get more volume, you get greater motor unit recruitment because you're recovered. Um, I do think you should rest a little bit more in the beginning of the workout, when you're trying to go for PRs, when you're performing the, the bigger, more compound movements and you know, going heavier. And then later on in the workout, maybe you're you know, chasing the pump or going lighter, going for the burn. Uh, but regardless, that's a good rule of thumb, 12 to 20 sets. And don't feel compelled to do 20 sets because I have clients who do 12 sets in a whole hour. But those 12 sets are really high quality and they're crushing it and you know setting PRs and doing remarkable things. So 12 to 20 is my answer. Thank you, Brett, for the awesome information. And if you don't know about Brett Contreras, I'm gonna link his channel below. Amazing YouTube content, amazing Instagram content. Just one of the greatest minds in our sport and just so happens to have just come out with a great book called The Glute Lab. Now, let's talk a little bit about individual differences. There's a principle in exercise physiology that explains that two people doing the same program are gonna respond differently. Well, why is that? Well, as we all know, genetics have a huge impact on how we respond to training and what our bodies look like. And so for this reason, we don't want to focus too much on what other people do and what other people have responded to. There's a lot that can be learned from, from research and there's a lot that can be learned from people that you know. However, you will not learn anything more than doing it yourself. Getting in the gym, performing exercises, and finding out what you respond well to is going to provide you a wealth of knowledge. This should be a journey about you. You can do all the reading you want, you can do all the research you want, but you can't learn about lifting weights without lifting weights, okay? So what's best for you is the journey of self-discovery, okay? Going in the gym, find movements that you like, find movements that you don't like. Don't get in your head that you must do squats because the squats is the king of lifts. Don't get in your head that you must do bench press. Find movements that work well with your body, biomechanically, leverage-wise, that you feel in the area you're trying to target. So finding exercises that work for you, effectively progressively overloading, and using the appropriate volume, starting around 10 sets, maybe maxing out at 20, maybe more, if you're a very, ex a very experienced, very gifted lifter, 
This is going to be what's most effective. Then we can start talking about things like nonlinear periodization or periodization principles, which allow us to train effectively in different rep ranges so we can hit body parts multiple times per week. But that's a very advanced technique. That's something that you need to look at when you're no longer in the early phases of tracking volume and looking at volume. Now, in today's information age, we are overwhelmed with videos and pictures of people performing odd and strange movements. But I promise you, the basics are going to give you the foundation that are gonna set you up for success for the rest of your life. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Go in the gym, use the exercises that work best for you, set up basic principles of training, having effective reps, and building your volume, and you're gonna be very successful in the long term. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for me today. If you're still here and you enjoy this type of content, hit subscribe. Otherwise, I will talk to you guys tomorrow.